Vegapunk is finally releasing some crucial info about the world government. Whether it is the realization of who Emu is, stuff about the One Piece, stuff about the Ancient Kingdom, stuff about the Sun God, something absolutely insane is going to happen in less than 10 minutes. And the Gorosei are pissed. As hype as it may seem with the Gorosei all coming to Egghead at once, I personally think this is the dumbest thing they could have possibly done. And by the time this timer reaches the end of the 10 minutes, I'm going to reveal an absolute bombshell that will completely make you believe that this is the case. The Gorosei are so certain that Vegapunk's broadcast must be in the Labo Stratum. So they all come to Egghead for this all frontal assault, not realizing that Vegapunk doesn't even have the system for his broadcast on Egghead at all. And I think Oda purposely set up this timer as a sort of inversion of what we usually think about when we think about One Piece and timers. Usually the villain has this timer where Luffy has to defeat the villain within a set amount of time. But in this case, we're actually trying to prevent the villains from getting to Vegapunk, from getting to the broadcast. And as we all know, a One Piece timer for 10 minutes realistically means it's gonna be four months-ish until we actually see the end of this arc. And we're gonna get a lot of fights. It would be even better if all of this stuff was absolutely for nothing because the Gorosei were just being fooled by Vegapunk so hard by revealing not just Saturn, but every single one of themselves and their true demonic forms. Think about it. Every time he's been told to do something, he constantly finds some sort of loophole. Whether it's Kuma somehow still being alive and having his will and his hockey while seemingly being comatose, or Bonnie, who's actually the highest authority of the pacifistas, being able to overthrow and overpower the world government, Vegapunk has been able to keep this family together, keep his morals intact, and keep the Gorosei questioning, Vegapunk's supposed to be following them. He's outplaying these people who should be considered the highest in the world pretty effortlessly. Now the first place I suspected was Marijua itself. How fitting that Vegapunk would reveal all this horrific info about the world government in the place that they reside in all the time. Abandoning their own place of refuge without realizing that right there in their own home is the thing they were looking for. We've seen a Vegapunk's cover story that he was at Marijua with the Gorosei. He might have planted something there many years ago and used his own technology to send a signal to that thing he planted so long in the past. That idea is so important. The past coming back to the future to make a huge impact, because that's what Vegapunk is going to be revealing after all. Something about the past of the world government is finally going to rise to the surface. Now I would be down with this idea 100%, but there are three main reasons why I think this is not actually on Marie Joie. First and foremost, I do think Vegapunk knows Emu exists and would not create anything in Marie Joie if Emu could get their hands on it. All the Gorosei could be gone and on Egghead, but as long as Emu is still in Marie Joie, Vegapunk's message is at risk, so I don't think Vegapunk would place his message there. Secondly, the presence of a Kainu being at Marie Joie, I feel as though Egghead and Ohara are meant to be really similar circumstances, and having a Kainu be in a position of power in both these situations would be kind of strange with a Kainu's arc in the post time skip being focused on how he has no power even though he's in a higher position versus him being in a lower position and having a lot more power to do whatever he wants to do. So I personally feel as though a Kainu being at Marijua further adds to this fuel that it's actually not there. And my final point is based on what I think Vegapunk is actually going to talk about in the message. If Vegapunk was planning on talking about Emu and the Sun God, it's at Marijua because both of those ideas are inherently connected to that location. However, because of everything that's been built up in this arc, I actually think Vegapunk's going to be talking about the Ancient Kingdom, which is not only the basis of his research, but it's also a way of continuing the will of the people on Ohara, a theme that's been pushed a lot through this arc. In my opinion, it's not at Marijua. It's at the place the people of Marijua destroyed, Ohara. Now there are a lot of reasons I think it's going to be on Ohara, so I might as well run the gauntlet. Vegapunk, in his flashback, was literally at Ohara. It's a huge thing that makes him realize how terrible the world government is. So much so that he places a tribute on Ohara to remember all the people that died there. Vegapunk also has a connection to Professor Clover, who's obviously the man that was going to reveal to the world government and to us what the name of the ancient kingdom was. When we first meet Shaka, one of the first things he tells us is not only that Saul is alive, but the will of Ohara still lives on and all the research that Vegapunk has done is based off of what Ohara did many years ago. That alone 
is huge, but there's so much more to this in my opinion. We now know that the Revolutionary Army is connected to Ohara, and we had a huge flashback with Kuma. We have that connection with Saul and the Giants, with the giant warrior pirates who helped save the Library of Ohara, now being at Egghead, which is seen as the second coming of an Ohara incident. There's an old scholar who gets killed for discovering too much. A little girl who's friends with this old scholar, who is an absentee parent because they're devoted to their cause. The fact there's a marine with Logia power in a state of contradiction with what they should do versus what they want to do. The fact that giants are the people that help the little girl be safe. The fact there's a buster call. The fact that Cypherpole agents are investigating the scholar. It's actually insane. Except this time, there's actually someone to defend the knowledge instead of the many people of Ohara who are massacred by Akainu, of all people. And wouldn't you know it, Akainu is also really relevant in this arc as well. With him being at Marie Joie, he'll actually be able to hear the information that Ohara wasn't able to get out because of him specifically. I think this placement of Akainu in the arc is very, very intentional because it shows how as the years have rolled on, things have inherently changed. Ohara didn't have anyone to defend it from people like Akainu, but now people like Akainu aren't able to do such a thing. So the Gorosei, a seemingly higher power than anyone else in the entire world, have to step into that role. I even think that the two locations that Oda chose to spotlight were done intentionally so. Dressrosa was not only ruled by Doflamingo, but Doflamingo was the person that alluded that there's something higher than the Celestial Dragons all the way back in Marineford, and he knows a lot of secret knowledge about the Celestial Dragons and Marine Joie. And with Water 7, that was the first arc we ever learned about so many things. The world government, Cypherpole, and, of course, the tragedy that happened to the people on Ohara. Now, outside of talking about the narrative potential of Ohara and Egghead being connected, I want to talk about a lot of the stuff that goes into Vegapunk's design, and how I think this also connects to Ohara really well. Vegapunk is obviously inspired by Albert Einstein, but he's also equally as inspired by Isaac Newton. Pretty obvious when you look at the apple on his head, and Isaac Newton's most famous discovery is discovering gravity by having an apple fall off of his head from a tree. Isaac Newton has a lot of dedicated discoveries outside of gravity. Optics, the idea of light being able to travel towards other things and disperse into different colors. And Vegapunk has a lot of associations with light. His interest in Luffy, the sun god, which he learned about during the void century research he did. His bond with Kizaru, the admiral with the light light fruit. Vegapunk decided to use visual Denden Mushis as well as audio Denden Mushis. And most importantly, the first thing that we ever saw on Egghead that Vegapunk created was holograms, something that was made of light that could be real or not real, be tangible or intangible. You could even say that Vegapunk is the base white light and all of his satellites are the refractions of the color that he exudes. Vegapunk obviously was inspired by the Tree of Knowledge of Ohara, and the Tree of Knowledge in mythology is seen as a bad thing. God didn't want the humans to eat from the Tree of Knowledge because they would learn too much and the devil convinced them to do so. Hence the reason the people of Ohara were considered devils and Robin was called the Devil Child since she knew what was told in the Tree of Knowledge. Which obviously has a lot of interesting imagery with One Piece, with the Gorosei and Emu having heavenly imagery and Devil Fruits being a bad thing, but also happening to be the thing that frees everyone from the oppressive regime of the world government. I think the idea that Vegapunk, who was inspired by the Tree of Knowledge, is also based on the apple from the Bible is really cool because the tree bore the fruit and the fruit allowed the research to continue onward. The cycle of things continuing onward with the fruit and the tree is really great symbolism. Now after all that information I know you're probably thinking, how does this actually mean anything is on Ohara in the first place? Did Vegapunk build some sort of lab there? Is Egghead, this massive laboratory, all for nothing? and the Gorosei were just baited into the situation because they just assumed it was there. I personally speculated in a theory I made a while ago that a lot of the stuff on Egghead isn't real on purpose. That's because in the climax of the arc, the hologram would come full circle, and the Gorosei are so full of themselves and out of touch of anything technological that they haven't even realized that what they're going for is a hologram. And this idea works so well in my opinion because the Gorsei themselves are almost like holograms. Sure, they can be injured, but they can also just instantly heal and reform to be whatever they want to be. Just like how Vegapunk with holograms is able to create something new out of nothing. There's one final thing that is the absolute nail in the coffin for me. Ohara's main imagery was the tree of knowledge. What's Vegapunk's major inspiring character trait? 
it's the apple that's on his head. How perfect would it be that the apple transmits a signal all the way back to where the tree fell, the same tree that Vegapunk found so much inspiration in? Because after all, the apple never falls far from the tree. And that's why I think it would be absolutely perfect if the broadcast device they're looking for in the lab of Stratum turns out to be a hologram all along. Only if they have those photonic gloves would they be able to interact with it. But that raises the question, if the hologram is what's on Egghead, what was the thing that originally caused the distress to be sent out in the first place? I think Oda can get really heady with this idea, giving Vegapunk the idea of making something that is intangible yet real. But I think just as likely we're able to see something that's invisible yet tangible. And that's what I think is on Ohara. Throughout this entire arc, we've been seeing a bunch of examples of characters passing through walls or getting into places they're not supposed to be able to get into due to holograms. Whether it's Sanji walking through a door that's actually intangible while being visible, or whether it's Vegapunk literally teleporting into walls, light dispersion is such an important concept in this arc because it shows Vegapunk's alignment with the revolutionaries in plain sight as well. It's a literal metaphor that Vegapunk is for the future of the world while working with the world government undercover. And I think it's really perfect that it would be invisible. And I know you might be thinking, well, how would the world government not know about all this stuff that Vegapunk's been doing? Well, Vegapunk was getting away with it for years and years and years. It literally only took one of his own clones of himself snitching on him for them to even have a wake-up call that he's getting into some serious stuff. With this being a pre-recorded message, he could have been planning this for such a long time. We even saw him call Dragon at the start of this arc, making York look even stupider by comparison, and the Gorosei really play into his own trap. Those are all the ideas I have about Vegapunk's final message being on Ohara. What do you think? talk about on stream and a lot of people were saying i was cooking so hopefully any of that made sense do you think it's on ohara did you like the marie joie idea more did you like the egghead idea as simple as that it being a hologram on egghead or do you have your own idea can't wait to see how oda continues to make this story even greater hopefully you enjoyed take care and have a good one